In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this easy sci-fi metal greeble material. Now, the base of this material is actually just created with two different nodes, this Voronoi texture and brick texture, and we're going to be using that to create the base of the texture, but then I'll also show you how to create the complete material with all the metal details and kind of the noise on the metal surface. And this material is great to add to sci-fi objects that you want to add some surface detail, like a spaceship or a robot. Now I originally created this material for my recently released course, my sci-fi construction robot. So that's an 11 part tutorial series where I show you step by step in real time how to create this sci-fi construction robot animation. And in the tutorial series we create this material here and we add it to the base of the robot to add some cool sci-fi details. So if you'd like to check out the sci-fi robot course, you can find the product links in the description and you can also check out the trailer video with the link in the description. So we have the scale value which you can change depending on the size of your object. Then we also have three different colors and then this material comes with three different randomized values. So you can see that randomized one is kind of gonna generate a random placement for all the little sci-fi details and bits. This is kind of like a seed value. Then we have randomized two and so you can see if I scale this bigger you can see there's just gonna be a few squares here and there or if I turn it way down you can see it's super detailed and there's lots of edges. And then the randomized three is similar but it kind of changes the placement of some of those dark plates and then it's also going to add a bit more detail or less detail and kind of change the surface edge and you can see if I turn the randomized three way down you kind of give that cool look as well that's a pretty cool sci-fi look with just little sci-fi bits and details on the metal and here right up on the screen are some different renders of some different variations that I've created so just by changing the colors and changing the randomized values you can really get lots of variations of this material we also have this edge thickness value and so this will change the size of those edges there on the little square pieces and then we also have the roughness of the metal if you'd like to make it really shiny or really rough and then we have the noise bump strength so if you want to make the surface look really banged up and rough you can turn that up and then we also have the greeble bump strength and that's just going to change the actual bump of those different little plates on the metal and if you'd like to purchase this procedural material you can also get that over on my Gumroad store and patreon page the links are in the description all right so i'll now show you how i set up the 3d viewport if you want to set up the blender file the same way that i have so i went to the add menu and i wanted to pre preview this on a sphere so I'm going to add an icosphere and then right behind me once you have the icosphere you can click on the add icosphere settings and I'll turn the subdivisions up to six so the sphere is nice and round and smooth and then I'll shade it smooth with the object context menu then I scale this object down by 0.6 and then I press Control a and just applied the scale I also went to the add menu and I added a cube and I scaled the cube down by 0.5 and then also pressed Control a and applied the scale then I went into edit mode and with all the mesh selected I can press Press Control B to add a bevel, and you can scroll your mouse wheel to make more edges on the bevel, and then click to place that there. You can go back to object mode and then shade the object smooth with the object context menu. And then I just brought the cube over here and kind of centered them. Then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the objects. Now, as for the lighting, I added these two different area lights right here, and so I scaled the area lights up and I kind of placed them behind the objects. And so for this first one here, I turned the color to a blue color and I turned the power to 80 and then this second one here I turned the color again to a blue color and this one I turned the power to 500 so if I hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered mode you can see we have some nice lighting there and it'll give some nice blue reflections and then also to get some realistic world lighting and reflections I went over here to the world properties and I added in the blue photo studio HDRI this is from polyhaven.com the link will be in the description to this HDRI if you'd like to download it and I downloaded the 1k HDRI HDR version on Polyhaven. So once you download the HDRI, you can click here on the yellow dot next to color and you can choose environment texture and then just open up the HDRI. And then just a few more settings to go over here on the render properties. If you scroll down and open up the film tab right here, you can check mark the transparent buttons so that you can't see the HDRI in the world background, but it'll still light the scene. And then also here on the color management, I'm using the view transform of filmic and I set the look to very high contrast to pop out the colors and make the lighting look more contrasty and saturated. All right, so I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered mode and I have the shader editor right over here. So let's just click on new to add a new material and we can rename it. And then we'll add the same material to both of the objects. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in the tutorial. So to enable the Node Wrangler, you can click on edit and go to the preferences. And then over here on add-ons, you can go to the search and you can search for a Node Wrangler and you can just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on so it's built into Blender and I'll show you how to use it in the video. 
Let's close Blender's user preferences. So the base of this material is actually really easy to create. We're just gonna go to the Add menu and we're gonna search for a Voronoi texture. We're also gonna go to the Add menu and we're gonna search for a Brick texture. These are the two main nodes that we're gonna use. Now, if I select the Voronoi texture, I'll press Control T and that's gonna add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And then I wanna use the object coordinates because the object coordinates will place the procedural textures on the objects more evenly. So let's put the object into the vector. All right, so now I can control shift and select the Voronoi texture, and that is using the node wrangler. So the feature of the node wrangler is that you can hold down the control and shift key and then select different nodes and that'll preview it on the object. So let's change some of the settings for the Voronoi. So on the 3D here, I'm gonna change this to the 4D. And then right here on the distance metric, let's change this to the Chebyshev. So you can now see that we have some little random squares with some edges. And then also this W value here, this is kind of going to randomize the texture. And I'm gonna turn the W value to a 0.2, but you can of course change this later to randomize the texture. I'm gonna keep all the other settings how they are, but let's control shift and select the brick texture and we can change some of these settings. So for the colors of the brick, I'm going to change this. However, you can change this later in the custom node group. But if you want to use the same colors that I'm using for color one, if you go here to the hex value, I'm using a value of A7, A7, A7. So it's just kind of a light gray. And then here on color two, I'm using a hex value of 595959. And then this mortar color here, this is going to be fully black. And then regarding the other settings, I just want to change the row height and I'm going to change the row height to nine. So now to really make this look like a sci-fi metal material, I want this Forno texture to distort the placement of the brick texture because the vector values, the vector values are determining how the texture is placed on the object. So for example, if you wanted to use the UVs of an object, you could put the UVs into the vector and then that would tell it to use the UV map of the object. Well, we're using the object coordinates and that's going into the vector of this Voronoi, but we can now take the distance of this Voronoi and we can put that into the vector instead. So now this Voronoi texture is distorting the placement of the brick texture. And so we kind of have those little squares there from the Voronoi and that's distorting the bricks. So we now have some bricks which are kind of distorted in the shape of the Voronoi texture. So we can take the color and we can put that into the base color of the shader and I can control shift and select the principled shader. Now, if you want it to look like a metal material, you can turn the metallic value all the way up to one so it looks like metal. And then also to give it a bit more surface bump and to make it look a bit more detailed and interesting, we can also take the brick texture color and we can put that into the normal to give it some bump. But then to convert it to bump data, we need to go to the add menu and we need to add a bump node and we'll put the bump node here between the brick texture and the normal. And to convert the brick texture color data into normal data, we want to put the color into the height value. So now if you kind of zoom in here and look at the reflections, you can see the the edges look kind of bumpy, but it is a bit too strong right now. So on this bump strength, I'll turn this down to like a 0.4. And then also to make it look a bit better, we can also take this roughness value, we can drag that down so that the metal is more shiny. Now, I do want to add a little bit of variation in the roughness so that some parts are a little bit more rough and other parts are a bit more shiny. So let's go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's put the noise texture underneath this Voronoi texture and I want to use the object coordinates again. So we'll put the mapping vector into the vector of the noise and I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. Let's change some of the settings of the noise texture. So I'll turn the scale to four. I'll also make it very detailed by turning the detail to 15 and this roughness I'll turn that up to like 8.6 so it has a little bit more detail. So now I can put the noise texture factor into the roughness to control how rough and shiny it is and I'll control shift and select the principled shader. Now this metal is quite rough right now and I want to make it much more shiny so to control that we'll need to change the colors. So to do this I'll go to the add menu and we're going to search for a color ramp and we'll put the color ramp between the noise texture and the principal shader and I can just kind of drag it up here. So now we can change the colors. So what I first want to do is make it a bit more contrasty by dragging the black tab over and then if I click on the black tab here if I make the colors lighter it's going to be more rough but if I want the metal to be more shiny that I can click on this white color here and I can turn it down and it will be more reflective and shiny. And if you want to use the same exact colors that I'm using, then on this lighter tab here, this is going to be a hex value of C7, C8, C8. 
And then this other value is going to be like a dark gray. And this color is going to be 595959 here in the hex value. So now that metal looks much more interesting because you can see there's little bits of roughness where you can kind of see the metal looks a bit dirty and it kind of adds some surface imperfections and makes it look more realistic. Now I also want to add the noise texture into the bump just to give it a little bit of surface bump. So I'll duplicate this bump node with shift D. We can put the normal into the normal. And now I can take the noise texture factor and we'll put that into the height value. So now the metal looks way too bumpy. So I'll turn the strength on this bump down to like a 0 0.02 so it is much more subtle. So it is a little bit hard to see, but if I kind of navigate over here to the reflections, you can see there's just a little bit of surface bump. And when we render the final scene and use more samples, you'll be able to see that better. But right now the denoise is kind of smoothing it out a little bit. But there's now just a little bit of surface bump on the metal. All right, so let's now turn this into a customizable node group to make it more useful. So I'm going to click and drag to box select these nodes. I'll press control G to join them together into a node group. And then we can add up the custom values. First, let's hit the tab key. So with the node group selected, you can hit the tab key to go in and out of the node group. I'll drag the node group over here. Let's make it a bit bigger. And I can also take the same name and add it here into the node group. So sci-fi metal greeble. Let's hit tab to go into the node group. And I'm going to hit the N key to open this side panel. And we can click here on group. And here on the interface, I'm going to just rename this to shader. So outside of the node group, you can see it says shader. Let's go back into the node group and we can now add up all the custom values. So I want to control the overall scale of the entire material. So this mapping node here is plugged up to all the textures. So this mapping scale can control the entire size of the material. So let's put the scale into the extra socket here. And then if I click on the scale, you can see right now it's going to be three values, but I just want to have one value to control the scale instead of having the X, Y, and Z as separate values. So on the type here, let's change this to float. And then here on the default value, we'll turn this to one. And then if I go outside of the node group, we can turn this scale back to one. So now that can control the overall scale. So let's go back and to the node group. Now I also want to control the colors, so let's drag the group input right up here, and then I can take color 1 and put that into the extra socket, color 2, put that into the extra socket, and the mortar here, put that into the extra socket. And then I can just rename these, I'll just rename them to color 1, color 2, and color 3. And then I want to add the randomized values, so the first value is going to be this W value, because it's going to kind of change the seed and kind of randomize where the metal plates are, so let's put the W into the extra socket there. And then the second randomized value is going to be this brick width. You can see if I change the brick width, that's going to randomize the texture. So let's put this brick width here into the extra socket. And then for the third randomized value, I want to use the brick texture scale. You can see that's going to really make the texture look more random. So let's put the scale into the extra socket there. And then I can just rename these to randomize. That's going to be randomize one and then randomize two and then also randomize three. Now I also want to be able to control the edge thickness. So there's this more mortar size here, so that'll change the edge thickness. So let's take the mortar size, we're going to put that into the extra socket there, and then if I double click on this to rename it, I'll rename this one to edge thickness. And then I want to be able to control the roughness of the material, so to create a custom value to control the lighter and darker colors of the roughness, we can go to the add menu and we can search for a hue saturation value, and we'll put this between the color ramp and the principal shader, and so now this value is going to make it lighter or darker. So the value will now control the roughness, so we'll put the value into the extra socket here. Let's double click on this and just call it roughness. And then I want to be able to control the bump strengths, so we'll drag the group input right down here. And this first one here, this is going to change the noise bump strength, so we'll put the strength into the extra socket. I can double click on this and rename it to noise bump strength. And then this one here is going to change the greeble bump strength, so we'll put this one into the extra socket. I can double click on this and rename this one to greeble bump strength. All right, I'll hit the N key to close the side panel. I'll drag this back over here, the group input. I'll hit tab to go outside of the node group, and there's the final material. So I'll just review the final material again. So we have the overall size, depending on the size of your object. We also have different custom colors you can change to make the metal look different. And also we have color three, which is kind of gonna change those dark colors. So you could make it a different color if you want to, like red or blue or some other color. I'm gonna make it black. And then we have these cool randomized values, and these can really be changed a lot. You can play around with these values to make the sci-fi greeble look very different. We also have this edge thickness, so if you want super thick edges, you could change that. And then we have the roughness of the metal to make it more rough or more shiny. And then we have the two different bump strengths. 
So that will finish it up for this tutorial, so I hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase this material and help support the channel, you can get that on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, links are in the description. Now this material was originally used for my recently released course, my sci-fi construction robot. And that course is an 11 part tutorial series where I show you step by step in real time the complete process of how to create this sci-fi robot animation. So we do the modeling and the rigging and the materials and the lighting and then we animate the robot and render that out to the final animation. So if you're interested in checking out the course you can find the product links in the description and also you can check out the product trailer video. That'll finish it up for this video so I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you found it helpful, and thank you for watching.